right. This is video number two. Uh, first one, we covered um, how to get the system up and running and what your responsibilities are for Haze. Um, now let's talk about actually running the lights uh, for a service and, and how this all works together. So again, um, there's six icons across the top left over here. And the second one over gets us to the virtual representation of the board. And so we're going to talk about you know that, that physical fader in front of you, the fourth one over from the left should be set to manually run the haze. Uh, if it's not, I'll show you how to set that up in a minute. Um, the far left one runs the house lights. The third one over is kind of is the wash for the front of the stage. It's good to know where that is because if for some reason there's a place in the service where you need emergency to throw a little bit of light on stage, you can reach up and just physically bring that uh, fader up. Now, be careful because sometimes, you know, we don't have a lot of wash on purpose, um, you know, for some of the specials. So um, it's it's really only if for some reason something goes going wrong and you know there's no light anywhere, maybe you want to bring the house up and bring some front wash up, they can at least get through, you know, a song, uh, even if the rest of the lights aren't working. So think of that as an emergency way to take over if you need to. Um, the way that most of the system actually works is off of time code. And uh, let's uh, let's go to the the play button version. So this shows me all of the different songs that uh, we're going to sing this Sunday, as well as there's two extra uh, cue lists. So these are these are cue lists over here. The first one, if I click on it, has some generic things that we use manually uh, during a Sunday morning. And uh, there's one for uh, you know basically as people are walking in, we call it the pre-service look. Um, the uh, person in charge of media in the back, usually the person running the sound will do a, a okay, we're going to do countdown in three, two, one, and then we go to the countdown queue. Um, T and G is turn and greet. Um, so we would use that for the, you know, once we've gotten through, usually we go through a little bit of a worship set. And at the end of that, um, one of the singers will say, hey, you know, uh, stand up and say hi to somebody. Um, as they start to have that conversation um, with the audience, you know, activate the turn and greet. So it's usually a front wash uh, of the singers. And it's more than anything, it's if there was a song that went on before and a bunch of crazy lighting and, you know, things that are going on, this is the way to just calm everything down. It's just front wash and house lights brings the house up to full and allows you to see who's standing next to you. That's what that one is. Uh, host is usually used when, uh, the, the local pastor gets up and, and uh, usually does an introduction. So normally we go through a worship set of some sort, two, three, four songs. Um, he'll, he'll get up and you know say some words, some announcements. Um, at the place where he gets up, we're going to hit that host queue. Um, it basically takes the two center lights and brings them up a little bit brighter, brighter and you know, uh, uh, fades out a lot of the rest of the stage. When he starts praying, um, there is a place for host prayer. It's usually actually not different than the uh, host queue itself. Um, and then when we get ready to, uh, sometimes there's a song in between and almost always there's a song in between. And then we go into the, the message where we pipe uh, Lafayette in. Uh, for the message, we'll activate the message queue. And it's basically the, um, the house lights at roughly 75%, 75 to 80% and uh, a little bit of backlight on the stage, the bars. Um, that's what you'll normally see during the message and we'll tweak those as well. Um, at the end of the message, there's a prayer. And sometimes we bring up different colored lights uh, that are pre-programmed as part of that prayer. Um, and, and so it's always a good idea to go there because it might be leading into an exit song of some sort. The blackout is literally all lights off. And it's not normally used in a service. It, it's possible you need a blackout um, manually, and that's a way that you can go there. Um, not always is there a post-message prayer, but there's almost always a closing after the, the end song. And I'll, I'll show you those songs in a minute and how that works. Um, usually we go to closing, and it's very similar to turn and greet. It's a front wash. It uh, just calms things down a little bit and leads into the walkout. Once they say you know, uh, hey, there's, you know, buckets at the back. And if you need prayer, come down front. Uh, you guys have a great week. Then we go to the walkout queue. So what you're going to find is all of these things are programmed on a weekly basis from Lafayette. 
Um, so there's a central organization, Christy and her crew uh, put all of these cues together and um, they're, they're good. They're, you know, 95% there, but there are a few tweaks that, that we do. Uh, and we're going to talk about the tweaks in a minute, but let's, let's just run through what a service looks like and how things are triggered. So first thing is you need to understand um, all of these things that we just talked about. As you think about that, those are manual uh, manually cued, manually, uh, uh, there, there are places within the service that you're going to choose uh, as the operator, um, and there's not really anything driving them. So to start any one of these cues, um, you just push the little play button that's here in this play column. So again, how do I get to the screen? I go to the, uh, it's the fifth icon over, so there's all these different possible screens and we'll go through some of these but here's the play icon so if you go to this one and touch on service flow um, then you'll have these options over here on the right let me make this a little bit bigger so you'll have all of these options uh, over here on the right so um, I mean, if i uh, go to uh, clicking here does nothing um, i can just go to pre-service look and uh, you know that, that doesn't do anything but if i click the play button it actually commands the system to activate that particular queue that creates the lighting uh, that that's ready for pre-service so that's what will leave up until the countdown and when we're ready for countdown you click the little play button here and it goes there now there's different ways to do this and you'll find different operators like to do it different ways. Um, I can start on this pre-service look. Um, and if I look at the actual physical console in front of you, there's a little play button down here at the bottom. Um, I can choose to just push that play button and it'll essentially go to the next queue. So it does the same thing, but it's, it's just sequential. So you might, if you want to, you can just sit there and hit the play button. Uh, personally, I like to be in a little bit more control and know exactly where I am. And, you know, there's a few cues here that I may not want to pass through. I might not want to go through a blackout to get and through the post message prayer to get to closing. I, I want to manually go to it. In fact, I can come down here and go straight to closing if I want to. Um, and it'll it'll just go there uh, directly. Or I can go back up here to the pre-service look by just pushing the play button next to pre-service. Now, there's a couple of different things going on that's interesting to take a peek at. Uh, the follow mode uh, just means these are all manual. If they say halt next to it, that means the only way you're going to get in or out of that queue is by pushing either the play button or, again, there's multiple ways you can do it with the board. Um, that, that means don't do it automatically. Don't, don't uh, guess, uh, you know, computer at, at, at when you should go. Wait until a human comes and presses the play button. You'll also notice that there's a time uh, next to each one of these cues. That's essentially once I press the button, how long does it take the transition time to go from where I am to that next cue? Now, three seconds is a nice general, it kind of moves into the next cue. That's a good number. The one I like to change is the host. Um, frankly, I like to make that one one second. So literally you just click right there um, and click on, uh, you know, put in a one and put an S at the end of it. Um, and we've now said, anytime I click on that button, go to the host very quickly, only take one second. Why, why would we do that? Well, uh, Dan in particular surprises us a lot. He'll pop up and start talking. And if there's a long pause or it takes a long time to get there, it's kind of distracting. So it's kind of better to be able to go there immediately. The rest of them, I like that three seconds. So generally that's what you're going to be doing during the service. What about all those songs? Well, we have a system. There's a computer up by the drums that's um, running tracks. And all of the uh, band members and the singers have in-ear monitors. And we're playing uh, some basic tracks for them. Um, there actually is a pre-recorded set of all the different instruments and some background vocals and that sort of thing that they can hear that uh, uh, in, in, and they can control the volume of it themselves. Um, and we play a little bit of it uh, in, you know, in the auditorium here. Um, but along with each song, there's what we call time code. So there, it's a digital uh, representation of time that um, each song is, is actually recorded with a different time code. So if you look over to the left, uh, on, and you're assuming you're sitting on the uh, lighting console, if you look over to the left, the far right fader 
on the audio board on the Yamaha uh, that's right next to you, the far right one. If you stand up and look at the little lo logo and the label next to it, it says time code. So that fader feeds that digital signal to your light board. So for your light board to know what's going on and which song is being played, that far right fader needs to be, you know, up about three quarters of the way up at zero and the little button of it uh, uh, on, uh, right over it uh, should say on. So if it's on and it's at three, three quarters up, then when the drummer uh, hits, you know, the start the track for um, the first song, um, that computer's also sending your light board time code. And basically when this computer is getting time code, it will automatically go through the cues for a particular song. So let's look at the first song uh, this Sunday and we'll, we'll come back to. So normally what would happen is I'm on pre-service, we'll go through countdown and uh, from countdown, uh, you really don't have to do anything as long as you're getting time code. Uh, and and where we'll see it is up here on the far right, you see it says no time code. Um, at the point at which he starts the tracks, um, you'll start getting that digital representation of time and that will start what looks like a clock. And it'll the first song is usually, um, it, it looks like it's 1 a.m. So hour one, uh, minute zero, second zero. That's what it looks like. And it just starts counting as if it were you know 1 a.m. in the morning. That's what we say. The first song is, 1 is done at 1 a.m. The second song is 2 a.m. Third song is 3 a.m. Fourth song is... 4 a.m. You get the idea. And all of the cues for that particular song, um, the light cues are recorded to trigger based on what's going on with the song. So that way the lights can say, stay synchronized with the song itself. So let's look at the first song. So the first song, uh, again, there's the, uh, the follow mode. It gets triggered by time code. And that first intro triggers at uh, 1 a.m. and 14 hundredths of the second. So basically the instant that they start the track, um, this system will begin receiving the time code and it will trigger and the first cue, the first lighting cue will come up. You don't have to do anything. It'll just do it automatically. Basically, if you're in service flow and you've gone to the countdown, then as soon as that uh, first song starts, the computer takes over. You'll see on the top right that you're getting time code and that first cue will trigger. It'll look like this, uh, but you will not have had to push the button. It'll do it automatically. In fact, um, you can try to push those buttons, but as long as it's getting time code, the computer just takes priority of listening to time code and it'll kind of ignore you. So good, quick rule of thumb. If something goes wrong and the cues are wrong for some reason, and you're like, oh, I, you know, I can do this. I could manually go down here and you know, uh, push it through the different cues. You can, but if it's still getting time code, you don't have control. The computer has control. So if you want to take over, reach over and turn the time code uh, uh, fader off or you know, hit the little on button next to it. This will stop getting time code and you can take manual control. In fact, if you want to, um, you can turn time code off. And uh, if you know what the cues are, you can you know, go through the song just like you do the pre-service. So it's something you can do, but you know, don't recommend it unless something's going wrong or you're not receiving time code or the suddenly, you know, it's not triggering right. Uh, turn the time code off and you can take over and, and do it. If you do that, I might suggest sticking with some of the things that make sense, like go to the verse. Uh, don't mess with all the stuff in between when the chorus starts or you think there's a natural transition, go to the chorus, uh, go to the bridge. And when the song's over, always go to end. Now, little tip, theoretically, um, the track runs long enough that it will go all the way and go to the end. And the end usually is maybe there's a lot of flashing lights and things are moving. The end is almost always a calming. It's okay, put all of the lights back to uh, default, maybe turn them down, whatever it is. Maybe there's a blackout, but you, you hopefully at the end of each song, it gets all the way to the end cue. If it doesn't, uh, and you stop getting time code and lights are still flashing, uh, you know, either come over and whack the end that usually um, will 
will calm things down. Or if you're not in the song watching it at the time, you can go to one of the standards like a turn and greet or uh, a closing. That's that's a good place just to go as a safety. If for some reason the lights are flashing and somebody's up there talking or praying, go to one of those other cues because it'll uh, you know you want calm during those times. So that's what goes on during a song. And then uh, when the uh, drummer keys the next track, um, you know that starts song number two, and frequently. Uh, they they don't allow you know, don't allow more than a beat between the last song ended and I'm going to trigger the next one, um, so usually it's pretty quick. And when the second one hits, notice over here it's on hour two. Um, that's how we distinguish this is the second song. We just artificially say it's two a.m. and uh, it's it's hour two. That's the way we do it. Um, we go through the third song. Usually after the third song, see one of them says special. So after the third song, normally. Um, that, you know, if the special is next, that usually leads into the sermon. So after the third song, be ready, we want to make sure it gets to the end, but we're probably going to go to the host uh, to turn and greet first. Um, so at the end of that song, Hey, everybody, thanks for being here. You know, go to turn and greet, um, you know, uh, shake hands with somebody next to you and great. Um, so then, you know, that pauses for 10 seconds or so, and then watch Dan, and as soon as he steps on stage, whack the host, not whack the host, whack the host uh, cue, and that brings up just the center, and, uh, you know, Dan will talk, he'll go into prayer, you mainly do that, and uh, notice the next one's message, so that we're not going to go into that manually, at the end of host prayer, normally Dan introduces the special um, where it's going to go into the special. And again, you can just stay here. Uh, you don't have to go watch the cues on the special. I like to, but um, as soon as they start, uh, what'll be one, two, three, hour four, as soon as they start track number four, the cues for the special will start. I can go over here to watch the cues progress. And again, none of them say halt. So none of them are manual that the computer will do it itself. So it'll just, and the special usually has a lot more cues than a normal one because they, you know, do hits on beats, and it's it's a uh, it's the one we spend the most time on pre preparing. Um, so that that's basically what the service looks like at the end of the special. Again, hopefully, they get all the way to the end. This particular one has a blackout at the end, so it goes to end, and then uh, about one second later, it goes into blackout. Um, normally, at that point, if if it's gone to blackout, you want to be back on the service flow, and be prepared to go to the message. So. Normally, it's a, it's a little dance, a little artistic, but um, we're going to start the feed from Lafayette. Um, usually, we start the audio first. Uh, we bring the audio up from Lafayette. The person running Pro Presenter over there will flip the video over just a half second later, so then we see the video. But before that all happens, like right as the audio starts, that's a good time to go into the message. So again, what would you have been doing doing with Hayes before that? So at the end of the special, you know, you can be watching the cues for the special. Let's go to it and see. We know that the special ends at four o three twenty five, and we'll be able to see where we are in the time code right up here. So maybe at four o two and a half, something like that. Um, we would reach up and, you know, bring the hay because the haze would have been at 50%, you know, from the message going into 15 to 18% during the special, unless you need more, because you got a lot of lights, but about 402 and a half, because it's about a minute before the special's over, kill the haze so that we have time for the haze to dissipate. So that's a, that's a good thing to do. And then as I uh, get to the message, um, hopefully the haze is, you know, it may be there, but it's starting to dissipate. If there's too much on stage and you want to clear it faster, there is one other option. Um, and again, hopefully we will have pre-programmed this, but uh, right here you see it says haze fan. Now, whether you can physically uh, move this one or not, because on our particular board, the uh, fader's broken off, or you can come to this screen and use the virtual, does the exact same thing, uh, bring that all the way up. Um, there's a fan on the right side of the stage that blows to the left side of the stage, your left, and will help to dissipate that haze. And if for some reason it's just too billowy and there's too much and 
you can't really see the video well or it's distracting, go ahead and bring that fan up for a little while and that'll help clear the haze off of the screen. So that's a good thing to do during the service if you need to. And I usually try to put it there. So again, in the message, at the end of the message, there's a prayer. Uh, manually, just pay attention. And when you when he starts praying to end the message, go ahead and go into the prayer. And again, normally there's one more song. And in, in our case, we're going to do I Thank God after uh, the message. So again, from here, you don't have to do anything except when you start, when they start praying and they normally pray for somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute, good time to come over and bring the haze back up to 50%, fill the stage again in preparation for that last song. Once it uh, begins to fill, bring it down to 15 to 18%. And by that time, the time code will have kicked off because they're going to start and, you know, hour or whatever that is, hour five is the time code that you'll be getting. It'll trigger the lights. They'll do all their special things um, for that closing song. At For the last song at the very end of it, uh, hopefully we get all the way to the end. If for some reason we, we don't, you might have to trigger this a little early, but go ahead and go to uh, the closing. And that's where, again, somebody's up there saying, thanks for being here. There's buckets at the back. You should be on that closing queue. That's the closing queue. When they're finished, they might play, play out a little bit. You know, normally they play another um, half of a verse or whatever, just instrumental. Uh, but if once people start to walk out, go ahead and click the walkout queue. It basically takes the lights on the stage down, um, and at least temporarily till we have it all hooked up. Go over and turn the house lights, uh, the, the down lights for behind you and that first section in front of you on. It's the second button, the middle button in the top, number two, uh, brings them up to about 25%. It's just, it's a good way to walk out. So that's what a service looks like. There's some manual things that you're going to do. All the songs are triggered automatically. It's all triggered by the time code. If time code's not working, you're not getting time code, make sure that the fader is up uh, next to you and uh, the little button is on. Uh, so that, that's one of the panic things. If for some reason the lights aren't triggering, make sure you're getting time code. If you're not getting time code, go into the song and do the best that you can while uh, we try to troubleshoot it. That's what running a service looks like. That's what you're responsible for during the service. Um, in the next video, we'll go through what do you need to do locally to set up and prepare for a service, All right?